Hi everybody, this is Palace of Forest. I'm Old June. Today we are talking about pictures of the brave. I have three episodes. The first, on a cold afternoon in New York, January 15, 2009, a U.S. Airways Flight 1549 Airbus had just taken off from LaGuardia Airport heading to North Carolina. The plane had not reached its full height yet when a flock of Canadian geese covered the sky in front of the plane. Passengers on the plane heard crashing sounds and the fire coming from the engine. A terrible thing happened. Both engines were not functioning. The chief pilot was the experienced Chelsea Bernard Solenberger III, Solly as the nickname, and the co-pilot Jeffrey Skelet reported the accident to the control tower. The control tower ordered them to return to LaGuardia Airport, but they both knew fly back with both engines down would be very risky. Solly, an ex-US Air Force pilot, had experienced landing a plane on water. Below them was Hudson River, and they have to make a sound decision quick. Wow, success. They work together wholeheartedly, decide to land the plane on the water. What a wonderful achievement. Truly proud of this US ex Air Force pilot. Well, it seems like a happy ending. However, after watching the movie Sully, directed by Clint Eastwood, and Tom Hanks play Sully, then you realize the real story was not that simple. The pilot and the co-pilot did not obey the control tower's order, so they had to face the trial. Sully, just about to retire, had to worry about the loss of his retirement fund. They face a lot of questions and suspicions even. Sully, responsible for over 100 lives. I think it's 160 or 70 passengers. He have to make a split second decision. So this is a big decision. And he reiterated that he had no regret about the decision to land the, the plane on the Hudson River. He is very, very brief. The second episode. This year is the year of dragon. Just a few days after Chinese New Year, the 47 years old Russian anti-Putin activist Anatoly Navalny was declared dead. Russian polar area prison. Who was he? Is that so important? In the free world, he probably would not even be known for his behavior. But in Russia, if you dare to be an anti-Putin activist, you are asking for death. If you are not afraid of death and continue your behavior, you are bound to be famous because you are challenging death. There are many similar cases in Russia and Putin's rule. In 2015, a gentleman named Boris Nastov was shot to death multiple times, say seven or eight times, in front of the Red Square. Can you imagine that? Red Square, like a presidential residence. It was astonished. Boris was an anti-Putin activist. Navani was a lawyer anti-Putin's corruption. He intended to be a candidate for the election. In August 2020, he was poisoned on the plane. He's crying along the whole flight. He was sent to Germany for treatment. He was saved. A few years earlier, in 2017, Navalny had been attacked by someone who threw green nerve poison on his face. He almost lost his right eyesight, but he insists on continuing his anti-Putin work. The 
the Russian Judicial Department accused him of being a spy for the CIA of U.S. government. He accused the government back. He made a lot of news. As for Russian corruptions, I will explain a little bit more. In 1990s, the USSR dissolved, and many huge state-sized departments were facing reform or dissolution. And the Yeltsin and Kabachev, they transferred some national organizations such as energy or mineral industries to their close associates or political friends. However, the Russian economy and the industries worsened. When Putin took over, inflation and currency downtrend were out of control. Putin made friends with oligarchs, cooperating with him. They become good friends and share the profit. Meanwhile, he punished those opposing him. For example, the Russian energy tycoon, Nikhail Khodorkovsky was sentenced to jail and sent to Siberia, Gulag, after Mikhail's submission and the recognize of his guilt, Putin pardoned him and sent him exile, Switzerland. So he retired there, make no sound, not a beep. Other Russian oligarchs purchased expensive apartment in Paris or in Florida, luxury yachts, Sometimes news released out from Russia, oligarchs, amazing expensive purchases. Navani formed the Anti-Corruption Foundation, FBK, to report those oligarchs' activities, sometimes amazing the world. When the German medicine facility fixed Navani's poison last time, in 2020, they offered Navani asylum. He refused and decided to go back to Russia. And everybody knew that he would be sentenced and jailed if he went back to Russia. Navalny wanted to continue his work. Not surprisingly, he was captured at the airport in Moscow and sentenced to 19 years in jail in a polar area prison. We still hear from him now and then. And now, Ukraine-Russian war continue for the third year. Putin is also facing an election. He probably feel the need to end this troublemaker once and for all. So Navalny died in jail. Nobody knows how or why. Navalny's wife declared that she will continue his work and thanks Navalny for giving her 26 happy years in life. Number three episode. The Year of the Dragon brings shocking news, one after one. An acting U.S. Air Force soldier, a white young man named Aaron Bushnell, 25 years old, belonging to the high-tech categories in U.S. Air Force. Remember, he's acting U.S. Air Force soldier. He seemed to have a very bright future in the Air Force, but on February 28 this year, he put on his full military uniform and burned himself in front of the Israel Embassy in Washington, D.C. to death. He announced his intention on his personal social media, placed his camera in front of him and pouring burning liquid on himself and set himself on fire. What a horrible picture. There were not too many news media reports. Of course, according to psychology and sociology, committing suicide is not a message should be declared. And that's particular at that moment, the Israel-Palestine war is still going on. And the US government support for Israel genocide has caused many U.S. citizens discomfort. Bushnell, an acting U.S. Air Force member representing the U.S. government, it would give a bad impression worldwide. Now, the government is investigating this case. If the government can find out something wrong about his mental health or 
anything or a happy family life, then U.S. government would have a good excuse to save the face. This young man burned himself and shouted, Free Palestine! before he fell down. I'm speechless. He was sent to the hospital and died later. Then I found out online, said he was married and had two children. I was wondering if he loves Palestine more than his wife and the children. It seems not to make sense. But then I remember Ming Juemin, one of Chinese Huang Hua Gang Lie Shi. He had a wife and children also. We read his farewell letter to his wife. It was so sad and brief. Maybe Aaron Bushnell has the same character. He is a martyr, a brave man. Imagine the pain of burning, one of the most painful suffer of the body. I respect him. Actually, this is the second case happening here to burn to death of a protester. In December last year, 2023, there was a woman protester who burned herself in Atlanta in front of Israeli consulate, but almost no reports on that issue. The USA is a, still is a great, great country. I hope in this US government realizing that supporting Israel genocide is totally against the wishes of the US people. Let's pray. Thanks for watching. See you next time.